Hi guys and um, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be about the mosaic that I made, the outdoor mosaic. It was quite a big project. Um, it's going to be kind of a how-to video, also things that I did that worked and things that I did that went wrong and so some tips and some advice so you don't make the same mistakes that I do because some things didn't actually work out perfectly unfortunately. I first had this idea a couple of years ago, so quite a while ago, when I broke a plate and then a cup and so on and I had a bunch of plates that were chipped and bowls that were chipped and things and so when I moved into this house um, and we actually got some decent crockery and I was getting rid of all the old stuff um, it just seemed like a great use of broken old plates, bowls, cups, etc. Um, that I could use to make a mosaic. Initially I had thought about doing it on a picture frame and then just hanging it on the wall but because now I have an outdoor space, I have a garden, I had some areas outside that I could actually put a mosaic onto. So in the middle of our garden we have kind of a manhole cover. It's in the middle of the lawn, it's really ugly and I thought that would be the perfect spot to brighten up by putting this mosaic down. So that's why I decided to make it. I started off by doing a lot of research because it's an outdoor project. It needs to be reasonably durable and weatherproof. I also needed to make sure just that I knew kind of what I was supposed to be doing um, and, and then I just went for it. So I bought a bunch of stuff online. Um, I got the um, mortar and the sand that you mix together to make the, the mortar like the cement to stick it all down. I got some grout. I got um, a waterproofing sealant as well. Um, so the first part of the process was breaking up all the plates and the bowls and the cups that I was using. So I took them outside, I wrapped them in an old sheet which got completely destroyed so don't use anything that you would want to use afterwards. It got covered in holes and ceramic dust, it's not at all usable. I got a hammer, I had some goggles and I smashed all the plates up. Whilst it was quite satisfying to um, get out some anger and unleash some pent up frustrations. Um, smashing the plates was actually quite hard work. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would. It was also quite noisy so if you like your neighbours you might want to warn them that you're going to be doing it. <laughs> I didn't know exactly what my image was going to be, it was always just going to be abstract. Um, I did have quite a few pieces of the same shade of blue just because of the plates that I was smashing up all had a blue side, a light blue side. So it ended up being unintentional that my theme was blue. So I collected quite a lot of different shades of blue um, and then tried to create a design out of that. In the end I ran out of pieces so I had to incorporate some other colours and so because I had to smash a red plate and that was quite different than the other colours I decided to make that a central point so there is the red in the middle and then the blue and the other pieces are all on the outside and that was the extent of my design. Although my design was abstract and fairly simple, it took me a really long time to arrange the pieces. I totally underestimated how much time that would take. It was quite a big area that I was covering and I did need to go back and smash some more plates because I did run out of pieces, so that obviously added to the time. And I decided to arrange all my pieces to uh, work out the pattern before I then went and mortared them down. So if you have already got an idea of how you want it to look, or if you totally don't care and you're just gonna wing it, then you could just stick them down with the mortar as you're going along. But I didn't do that. I put them all down in place first and then I used the mortar. So it probably took me about six hours on that first day 
just to smash the pieces, arrange the pieces and stick them down with the mortar. So that was kind of exhausting. <laughs> One of the big problems that I had, probably my main problem that then caused subsequent annoying problems, was that the mortar didn't stick. So uh, you mix together the cement and the sand and then you um, spread a thin layer to the back of each of the pieces. Then you stick them down and you leave it about 24 to 48 hours and then it should dry and then they should be stuck down. Unfortunately, um, when I went back after I'd left them to dry the next day, a lot of the pieces were just coming up in my hand. It was like the mortar had dried out and hadn't actually stuck the pieces down. So I went online and I googled it and there was some discussion about if you live in a very hot deserty climate, it can dry out the mortar too quickly and it doesn't actually have time to adhere to the surfaces. So we have had an unusually run a long run of hot weather in the UK or we had done up until that point um, we'd had about a month without rain and with temperatures in the high 20 celsius which is unusual for the UK and uh, for it to be so consistent last summer it just rained and it was at least 10 degrees celsius colder so uh, quite a different feeling so I don't know if that was the problem or if it's something that I did wrong um, but by that point I couldn't really do anything about it. So some of the pieces when I picked them up had the mortar stuck to the piece but not to the surface and some it had stuck to the surface but not the pieces of ceramics. So I don't know if it was a problem with the surface and the ceramics or if it was a problem with how I mixed it or if it was a problem with it drying out. It, I just, I don't know. Um, but that was quite frustrating because I didn't really know what to do about it when all the pieces were just coming back up after I'd spent so long sticking them down in the first place. <laughs> when I went online to try and solve the problem of the mortar not sticking down the pieces, pretty much everything said you cannot use grout as a replacement. I knew I would have to grout in between the cracks and that would help to hold a few of the pieces in place probably, but when about 70% of my pieces were coming unstuck, everything said grout will not work to stick them down, you can't use it as a replacement for mortar. So I just went ahead and did that anyway. <laughs> I mixed my grout up and I slapped it on and I was really tired by this point and really hot and really just didn't care anymore. <laughs> um, and I used grout um, to hold all the, pl all the pieces down. The good news is that it did actually work. The grout did work as a kind of cement. It does have a small amount of cement in it, so that would probably be why. Also, if it sticks the pieces to each other a little bit, then it's going to kind of anchor them down a little bit as well. The problem, though, was that I used so much grout, partially because I wanted to make sure it was thick because I was trying to hold the pieces in place, um, partially because the pieces kept moving because they weren't stuck to anything, which made it really awkward. Um, and partially because all my pieces of ceramic were really uneven because I was using bowls and cups and things that are kind of round or three-dimensional in some way rather than just the flat mosaic squares that you can kind of buy pre-cut. So it was all uneven and it was quite difficult to get into the uh, in-between places and the, all the cracks and things. So I put on an incredibly thick layer of grout. Um, this then caused subsequent problems because at the end you are just supposed to chip off any excess bits of grout and then wipe off um, to make a, a beautiful mosaic appear underneath. Unfortunately my grout was so thick that it's been really difficult to chip away and scrape away all the excess grout which is really annoying. <laughs> The project was really hard work physically. It was very uncomfortable being outside. I was crouched down in really awkward positions. My back was killing me. It took a lot longer to do each section than I thought it would. It was very hot outside, so it was very draining. Um, and then because of the problems that I had at various stages, I got quite 
demotivated. So the whole thing dragged on then for weeks afterwards when I just wanted to get it done in the space of one week it dragged on for about six weeks um, just because I couldn't summon the energy to go out and just finish off the last little bits because the last little bits are always the most time consuming generally I think. Um, I cut my fingers a whole bunch of times, I got my hands covered in the cement, uh, the mortar, the grout, everything and it dried out the skin on my hands and it just felt horrible. Um, it was fine after a day of just rubbing hand cream into my hands constantly, um, but I would strongly recommend not rubbing cement all over your hands. I ruined at least two plastic bowls that we used in the kitchen and about three serving spoons and a knife and a couple of cloths. <laughs> so I would recommend not using things at all for the project that you would ever want to use again. I also smashed up quite a lot of plates, but they were expected casualties, so I wasn't so bothered about that. In hindsight, it would have been a lot easier if I'd done it on a board and then take and could have worked on it inside and then taken the board outside. It would have been easier if I'd tried a much smaller area, um, a smaller, simpler project. Um, and if I hadn't have had the problems with the mortar, it would have been significantly easier, but I still don't exactly know what I did wrong there. And it might have just been the fact that it was so hot, in which case I don't know what I could have done to, to fix that really. Um, the project is finished. It's not perfect, but I'm pr quite proud that I went for it and that I've done this and that I've added something reasonably permanent to the garden and to our house um, and it always feels good to make something afterwards not actually during the time when you're getting blisters on your hands and things um, so I'm pleased that I went for it I just think in hindsight I could have done it better so that was my experience making an outdoor mosaic um, I hope you liked watching the video if you did please like if you have any ideas on how I could improve what I've done or things that I might have done wrong, any advice that you've got for me or anybody else, please leave that in the comments below. That would be most appreciated. Or if any of you have made mosaics and have videos to share or pictures or anything like that. Um, and please also subscribe and then you'll be able to see more videos on crafts and how to's and a bunch of other things that I also make videos on.